Hello YouTube, it's been a couple days too long since I have been here talking to you guys. And here we are with another Chicago Cubs gameplay franchise. This is game 8. Both teams in this matchup are 3 and 4. Here's game 8 of my franchise. We have had several injuries. Darwin Barney is out. And Ian Stewart is out. We've had a starting pitcher that's been out for a little while. I forget his name. And anyways, like I said last video, I will be talking to you about attempts to break the curse. And I've even added on to with the actual cure to the curse that has been actually told to the people uh, through interview uh, by way of the nephew of... Billy Cyanus, the one that actually put the curse on the Cubs in the first place. Anyways, and also I'm talking about the Billy Goat Tavern, which is one of those places. Well, we'll get to it. Anyways, uh, some of the attempts to break the curse, uh, like I said, Sam Cyanus, nephew in law of Billy Cyanus, he, he brought out a goat onto Wrigley Field. Uh, it was on opening day. He also brought it like several of the times. Uh, he brought it on opening day in 1984 and 1989. Those years were successes until they got late into the year. And the playoffs came around and, the, you know, they kind of flopped. And also, there was the 12-game losing streak at home where they brought the the GOAT. Um, they didn't, the people did not want, the ushers did not want him in there. But everybody was chanting let the goat in and they let him in and they won the game breaking the losing streak so there was multiple times where that goat did help but I guess he was left behind in the playoffs or something because they never did win the World Series after that so anyways uh, Cubs fans went down to Minute Maid Park from the home of the Houston Astros with the Billy Goat they were denied access and where they were read a scroll, and they claimed that they were reversing the curse. And that year, the Cubs won the division, and were five outs away from making the World Series, or somewhere about that area in the playoffs. And then the Steve Bartman incident came along, and Florida went on an eight-run rally in one inning, and Chicago found a way to give that one up. So moving on. Um, it, I, I that was kind of interesting, but in 1969, Sinus, uh, Billy Sinus, or Billy Goat Sinus, you know, whatever you want to call him, William Sinus, whatever, uh, the year before he passed away, he claimed, in 1969, he claimed that the curse was lifted, you know, he felt satisfied, and said it was lifted however the goat decided it wasn't uh just recently on february 5th 2012 five cubs fans decided to walk from mesa arizona to wrigley field they called themselves crack the curse they brought a goat with them named wrigley this is also a charity event as well as they're trying to raise money for it's Specific charity, I didn't get which charity, but it was for a good cause. Uh, also, in 1973, Sam Sinus, he brought a goat with, with a, one of his friends that was close to the Chicago community uh, and whatnot. He brought a goat in a white limousine with a red carpet laid out for the goat to enter. And they even had a sign that said... All is forgiven. Let me lead Cubs to the pennant. However, they were denied entrance into Wrigley Field. And the goat that they had with them was... I'm not sure how you pronounce this. I think it's Socrates. Socrates. S-O-C-R-A-T-E-S. And he was a descendant of Murphy. Murphy was the goat that... William Billy Goat Cyanus brought in to the stadium, and then they had told him he had to leave, and his goat's name was Murphy. If you saw the first video, you would know that. Um, 
So let's talk about the actual cure to the curse. Uh, Sam Science has been interviewed several times. And he says the only way to reverse the curse is that the Cubs organization shows sincere fondness for goats. And allowing them into Wrigley Field because they generally want to, not for publicity reasons. And that, that was kind of interesting. Um, they have to actually let them in because they want to, not for publicity reasons. Wow. So... The Billy Goat Tavern was purchased, well, it was originally named the Lincoln Tavern, but Billy Goat Cyanus purchased it for $205 in 1934. It was, the story goes that a goat walked in his place, and he later adopted it. I believe that was Murphy, but I'm not 100% sure. Then he grew a goatee, and he was nicknamed the Billy Goat. And that's why he changed the name to Billy Goat Tavern. There are many, well, not not, not many. There's like eight, nine or so uh, restaurants out there that follow the chain of the Billy Goat Tavern. Um, he did, he did not allow Republicans for some time. I'm not 100% sure on on why or anything. And the Republicans like had sit-ins waiting to be served. And whatnot. So I thought it was kind of interesting. I don't know why he did that. But that's pretty much all I have on attempts to break the curse and the actual cure to the curse and the Billy Goat Tavern. So I might as well use the rest of this time, and I actually have quite a bit, to talk about what I plan to do with this Chicago Cubs team. And maybe you might talk about the game plan again. But anyways, I feel like making trades is probably the best way to go about this. However, I'm not going to do that. Unless the Cubs in real life make a big trade, I'm not going to. Because I, I don't know why, I just want to kind of keep it true, I guess, is what I'm looking for here. I want to keep it true. I want to not make any changes. I want to keep it realistic, I guess, is what I'm trying to go for here. I'm trying to keep it realistic. And if it doesn't change in real life, it's not going to change in my franchise. And that's pretty much it. Like, I looked through this free agents in one of my favorite pitchers, because uh, I'm an Astros fan, originally. Well, I still am, but anyways. Uh, Roy Oswalt was in the free agency, and I would have signed him. I, I thought about it. But I didn't, because it it just goes against real life. And I didn't want to do that. You see right here, I'm coming in a pinch hitter. This is clutch, this is big, this is real. Here, here's Anthony Rizzo, who's been struggling a little bit. Uh, I'm thinking about sending him down to AAA, because he's been struggling. And if you're struggling in the pros, that means you're not ready. So go down to double uh, AAA and go in and develop, come back strong, you know what I mean? So that's probably what I'm going to do with him. Nice hit. But, uh, yeah, they only get one at second on the flubbed line drive. Anyways, um, also, I guess you guys should note, take note that I'm playing all games, 162 games. And I might as well tell you the reason why I did not post the last couple days. Um, the reason for that is because I play all 162 games, and I wanted to show you, like, a different team. And I'm not sure you guys would want to see the Brewers about four times. So I kind of held back on that, you know. Um, I actually had to play the Brewers five times. I played the one, played them that one time that I posted, um, and then I played them again, and I beat them 3-0. However... The save never, it didn't, like, stay on the game. Like, it saved. I think it did anyway. It's not 100% sure. I don't remember if it didn't save or not. But it didn't count it. So I had to play that game over again and end up winning the same game again, 3-0. It was like it, it was meant to happen. And then I lost the next game, and then I lost the next game. So that led my team to 3-7 and seven using the win probability right in our range. 
And that will do it for Garcia. Good job, Bears. Tony Campana. They like to say a Tony Campania sometimes. I don't know. They like to. It might be 2K12. They change the name. Like the pronunciation of the name every now and then. And it's kind of funny. Here's Tony Campania. Here's Tony Campana. Here's Altuve. Here's Altuve. <laughs> I don't know. Anyways, you see right there, we get another run. We're padding that lead. I believe we're up 3 1 now. And we're just having a good good game right now. Um, we didn't really force Garcia to throw that many pitches, but we were still hitting him just well enough to force it in extra innings. And that one looked like another extra base hit RBI, but Berkman with the stretch, and we'll have to stay at three. So we're going to go into the bottom of the 10th, looking to hold this lead. So we're going to put in Sean Camp. And Sean Camp is... I'm not sure if he's really the best um, in the business. He, he, no, he's not the best in the business. But I'm pretty sure there's better people we go with. Uh, I think Sean Camp, he's good. He can get. He can close the door... Uh, you'll close it right on these guys, right in these cards here. As they're going to sub in Skip Schumacher. And he'll get a chance to hit. As you can see, I'm not using the analog stick here. And the reason for that is because he was a the starting pitcher, uh, Travis Wood, was a lefty. And I normally mess up the analog stick rotation with the lefties, and I never changed it back. Uh, until the end of the game. Anyways, I'd like to say that this has been fun already. You know, I'm having a good time with the Cubs. I think I'm glad that I chose them, and I've learned a lot about them, especially the Billy Goat curse. I think that's kind of interesting how what one man said is stand, stood, stood true pretty much for this whole entire time, and that's kind of Kind of neat, but I feel bad for the Cubs. Anyways, uh, starting out three and four on the season. I don't think I'll be able to win the World Series if we continue to play like this. I think we we don't get enough hits. This team does not get enough hits. Um, I'm thinking maybe after April. I think yeah, April. After the month of April in my game, I'll go over the stats and everything. Is here's Castro throwing it over and. That almost killed somebody in the dugout over there. Castro getting charged with yet another error, and this game will continue. So, I'm thinking here, Matt Holliday up at the plate. Hmm. This could be risky. If I leave one over the plate, he could hit one out, and I do not want that to happen. I'm going to check the lineups, and look who's after him. Berkman. Oh, great. So, I'm going to go after him right here. I'm not going to walk him and give Berkman the chance to hit a walk-off. So, I'm going to go right at him. not going to give him an easy opportunity. Fouls that one off out of play. So, two gone. Bottom of the 10. 3-1. to one, Runner on second. Camp will throw it out to home plate. Ground ball. Castro, we finish it this time? Yes. Throws it on the first for the out. Thank you all for watching. That one was a nice finish. 3-1, to one, Cubs. I'm going to leave you off at the top three plays. And we're going to look at play number three. Nice one there by Soriano. Diving catch. That might have saved a couple of runs early in the game. Play number two. Well, this one. Um, I don't know how he got up so quickly, but he did. And play number one, I believe this was the RBI single to take the lead 2-1. to one. Thank you all for watching. Have a great day. Stay tuned for more Chicago Cubs franchise. Have a great day. Thank you.